So I'm just leaving the Softlays, Hiker Heaven, uh, in Agua Dulce. I'm about mile 458 right now. Uh, so I'll be hiking through this type of terrain here, uh, going up a canyon for a bit. Excuse me. Uh, at about eight miles to the first water, which according to the water report, uh, is kind of nasty. So filled up with about a gallon of water before leaving this morning. And I've got five days worth of food to get to the Hatchby. So pack's a bit heavy and looking forward to an uphill climb, but that's all right. Nice day today, uh, still a little overcast but hopeful that it will not rain or snow or anything of the sorts. Uh, just have a nice day to hike. The trail up here is just beautiful. Uh, I've been climbing this ridge for probably about the past five miles and Finally topping out, although it looks like the trail continues on over there, but we'll be walking on top of the ridge, so it'll be a little windy, uh, but this is just amazing. It reminds me of the AT down in the North Carolina, Tennessee area with the bulbs, the, like Max Patch or Waya, Big Hump, Little Hump. Just beautiful. Great view of the valley down below. Those are the mountains we were in before. And last week we were playing in about six to eight thousand footers. And right now we're probably three to four thousand feet high. So not too bad. Oh no, looks like the trail goes this way. That's too bad. But really enjoying it up here. So I've got about a little less than three miles left to go till I get to the road that uh, Casa de Luna is on. And then it's uh, two miles uh, from the road crossing. And today is just one of those days that feels really, really long, probably because you got a late start. Didn't start till, I don't know, eight or nine o'clock, probably eight. And it's been out in the sun all day. It's pretty hot and limited water. Pack is full from a resupply, so. But it's been a long hot day and to make it a little bit worse my shin has been bothering me on and off but today it's it's uh, hurting a lot probably something like shin splints or tendonitis or something I don't know just right between the muscle and the shin bone it's just uh, sharp pain almost every step but there's not really much I can do except keep walking. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, it's been a been a pretty hike. We're in this canyon now, just winding in and out of it uh, along one ridge. We're about to climb over and drop down to the other side where the road is in a little bit. And then I'll uh, show you what Casa de Luna is like. So here is home for the night. This is uh, the Manzanita Forest at Casa de Luna. And there's lots of little places to set up your tent. All the way through the uh, backyard. It's pretty neat. See lots of cool space is all carved out in here. 
So today's hike started with an 11 and a half mile road walk to bypass the trail closure for the powerhouse fire. Uh, there's a couple different options to take. Uh, some of them will take you right up to Hiker Town. Uh, I think that's near mile 511 or something. I don't know, we're gonna get on uh, the trail here in about five more miles where a section of the closure just opened up. And so we'll actually get on, I think at 498. So I'm happy about the fact that I'll still get to hit the actual 500 mile mark on the trail instead of on a road walk. But it's been nice walking through the Lake Hughes area. The lakes are bone dry. It's completely dried up. Uh, but there's some decent views of the mountains on either side of us as we're walking through. But that's how today's going and then the second half will actually be on trail. Well, I wanted to see wolves. So here they are. So this is a pretty section of trail with the flowers on either side. And I should be coming up on the 500 mile marker pretty soon. Uh, I've actually already passed the 500 mile mark, but since it's a growing trail, the actual sign for 500 miles is at 501.8 miles. And I should be coming up on that shortly. And here we are at the 500 mile marker, uh, which is 501.8. So, pretty nice up on this ridge. Got uh, views of the mountains out there. So this section of forest has been really neat with walking through and having it be fairly open as far as ground cover and brush. It's really just oak and then some grass and a bunch of miner's lettuce all growing, which is this stuff. It's edible. I haven't tried it. Uh, but maybe I will at some point. I don't know. Uh, it's just been really, really neat walking through the forest having shade and uh, yeah. All right, so made it into Hiker Town, which is a stop just before you hit the Mojave Desert and LA Aqueduct. And so it's this little western town. Um, over there we have City Hall and the doctor's office. And then over here, and there wasn't even there wasn't even a hotel, post office. Sheriff. The feed store. Got the schoolhouse. So it's like this old uh, old western town. Each one of these are uh, little private rooms that you can rent or you can tent here. So it's pretty neat. Uh, here's a little country store, I guess, about three or four miles down that uh, has burgers and uh, beer and uh, convenience store stuff that you can you can buy whatever your hiker heart desires but uh, I will be staying someplace over here probably have my fourth night on the ground for the trail and wake up early tomorrow morning before the sun comes back up and start hitting the Mojave. Got a 23.3 mile day tomorrow through the desert. 
So we woke up early this morning to get out uh, through the Mojave before it gets really hot. It's supposed to be the first uh, over 100 degree day in this part of California. So uh, I woke up around 4 o'clock and we're out on the trail by 4.30 and making miles while it's still cool out. Uh, the sun is not quite risen yet, uh, just about first light right now. And we're hoping to get to the spring at uh, Cotton Creek, or I don't know. It's 17.3 miles in. Uh, hoping to get there by about 10.30 this morning. Uh, grab some water and then be up at our campsite, which will be about six miles after that. Uh, a little afternoon, grab some lunch and then set up uh, my tarp and get in some shade. So hopefully it'll be a good day. Avoiding the rattlesnakes that are out at night. I haven't seen any yet. Lots of mice, a couple rabbits. So hopefully the rattlesnakes are fed and uh, not looking for us. Sun's coming up. So I've done about 14 miles so far. Got about three more left till get to the water source that's back on the aqueduct. Um, I don't think I'll need any. I brought seven liters with me this morning and um, I'm slack packing today up until the water source. So I've been making good time. I've only had maybe a liter, liter and a half because <clears throat> it's been cool, although it is starting to get very hot now. Uh, so we left the aqueduct a little while ago and we're walking towards a wind farm. Uh, and I think we walk through that the rest of the day until we get back up in the mountains. So I am back walking on the aqueduct. It's kind of just this cement sidewalk. Uh, so I'm walking on top of it and walking through this wind farm which extends pretty much all the way back to those mountains which is where I'll be camping tonight and then on the other side of them is Tehachapi and Mojave the town uh, so I'll do a 25 mile day tomorrow through those mountains and end up back in town Well, I am just about done with the wind farm and started gaining elevation again to go back up into those mountains. Uh, it's about one o'clock. Got about three miles left till where I plan to camp tonight. And then I will be able to rest until tomorrow. So it's been a pretty hike in its own way. Uh, lots of the poppies you can see down there along the way that's the, the most I've seen in one spot so far is right up here as we start getting back into the mountains but lots of Joshua tree which was pretty neat and lots of these wind turbines And then uh, Megan's friends came out, uh, made us some quesadillas and had some cold drinks for us. So we hung out with them for about two hours before moving on. And now uh, we'll get up to camp, make a late lunch, and then probably an early dinner and call it a night. Well, I am back in the mountains now, and in this little canyon here, and that right there in the center of the frame is our water source and the campsite. But since it's only about two, I think take a rest here and then move on a little bit. Looks like the trail heads up that way.
but nice, uh, pretty canyon right in here. So I was asked by someone to go over my hammock setup uh, that I'm using on the PCT. So here it is. Uh, tonight I am camping in Taylor Horse Canyon, uh, just after the Mojave Desert. Right when you come back up in the mountains, this is the first water point. Uh, so I am hanging off a couple of the uh, scrub oaks, and we'll start with the hammock. So it is a Hennessy uh, hammock. I forget the actual. Um, type that it is. I know it's the, the ASIM Hyperlite, I believe. I don't know if there's anything else in the in the name of it though. Uh, so that's the hammock. This is the undersling. You've heard me referencing that. That's a, a waterproof uh, layer that, that sits underneath um, and provides some wind protection and then also keeps the under quilt dry. Uh, I'm not using the Hennessy hammock tree hugger straps. I'm using the uh, Eno hammock, the Eagle's Nest Outfitter uh, brand. Uh, it's a lot easier to just wrap these around the tree and uh, then clip in with carabiners. The Hennessy hammock doesn't have normal loops like the Eno hammock does, so I've had to tie uh, various knots in here. And I'm just using an alpine butterfly, uh, two alpine butterflies on the rope, and then uh, at the end, I finish with a, a figure eight on a bite. Uh, it gives me three different points on each side of the hammock to uh, put the carabiner in for uh, the various distances I have to go between trees. Uh, so this has been working out pretty well. I just uh, put the tree hugger straps around and then uh, clip in with the carabiners. So on the inside, uh, underneath, I've got an enlightened equipment underquilt. Uh, it's a 20 degree underquilt, uh, orange on the inside, gray on the outside. Uh, I believe I got the extra ounce of down added to that. And then I've got a Mountain Hardware Phantom 32 uh, sleeping bag on the inside as well as a Femorest uh, Z-Lite pad I think maybe. Um, anyway it's the just the closed cell foam pad underneath. Uh, the underquilt doesn't cover the entire length of the hammock, so the the pad is really to keep my feet warm, so that's towards uh, this end. And then my head is up here, and the underquilt kind of stops right here and goes to about here, and my feet over there. So that is my hammock setup. Uh, it stakes out uh, on either side. And then I have a tarp that goes over the top of it if it's going to be really cold. I just connect it into the tree hugger straps. Um, if it's going to be cold or if it's going to rain, I put the tarp up over the top. But tonight it, it looks pretty clear, so I'm just going to uh, not put it on. Uh, any other questions on it, just uh, let me know. You can either comment on the video or uh, email me at hikeformom at gmail.com. Well, I'm at mile 550. And I just crossed over to the downhill side of this bridge, headed towards the Tehachapi Willow Springs Road. And as soon as you get up over the crest, it goes from just desolate desert on the Mojave side to a much greener uh, landscape. Uh, before the fire, I don't know when the fire was, but you can tell there were a lot more trees here. Uh, but there's grass on this side, and wildflowers, and you can hear birds chirping. And it's just <laughs> feels a lot more alive over here than it did on the other side, where there's really just just desert. So looks like I'll be walking through another uh, wind farm in a couple miles before I get down to the road, but just enjoying the hike this morning so far. Got up early, uh, I was on the trail by 5.30 in order to get that last bit of little desert section done before the sun was beating down on us and uh, we made it. So. 
now it's just getting down to the road. Well, I am walking next to Highway 58 and about to head into Tehachapi. Um, I just walked this road and then over the overpass to where Carl and Suzanne are waiting for us in the RV. And they're going to drive us back to where we set up our tents in town at the uh, RV park earlier today. And then we're going to zero tomorrow. So this is it for this section. Uh, we waited to do this last eight miles between uh, the Tehachapi Willow Springs Road and Highway 58 until this evening when it was a lot cooler since there was no shade. Definitely worth it. Uh, but yeah, so that's the end of this. Next stop is Kennedy Meadows. Hi, my name is Josh Lamoth, and this summer I'm hiking the Pacific Crest Trail in memory of my mom, who always encouraged my sense of adventure and loved hearing stories and seeing photos of the places I've been. My mom passed away from Alzheimer's disease in October 2015. And this summer, I've partnered with the Alzheimer's Association, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire chapter to spread awareness of the disease and help raise funds to support those living with Alzheimer's and their caregivers. Alzheimer's disease is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States, and the only cause within the top 10 that has no prevention, treatment, or cure. To join me in my fight to end Alzheimer's, please consider making a donation through the fundraising page in the description of this video as well as its link to my blog, hikeformom.wordpress.com. Together we can make a difference. I hope you've enjoyed watching the videos and look forward to the rest of the trail. Thank you. I ain't seen some of them in forever. It's one of those never forget it, better stop and take it in kind of scenes. Everything's just right, yeah, except for one. You should be here, standing with your arm around me here, and cutting up, cracking a cold beer, saying cheers. Hey y'all, it's sure been a good year, it's one of those moments that's got your name written all over it, and you know that if I had just one wish, it'd be that you didn't have to miss this. You should be here. Taking way too many pictures on your phone Showing them off to everybody that you know back home And even some you don't, yeah, they say now you're in a better place And I would be too if I could see your face You should be here, standing with your arm around me here Cutting up, cracking a cold beer Saying cheers, hey y'all, it's sure been a good year It's one of those moments It's got your name written all over it And you know that if I had just one wish It'd be that you didn't have to miss this Oh, you should be here, you'd be loving this You'd be freaking out, you'd be smiling Yeah, I know you'd be all about what's going on should be